this video is going to be all about lasers. So how do lasers actually work? These neat little contraptions, which I've got one right here. All right. So this laser is in the background here. Um, you can see it's showing up on my hand. So uh, in fact, this laser probably looks blue to the camera, but it is indeed purple, 405 nanometers. So in fact, it's almost a UV laser. And I'm going to leave it here to spin this little radiometer. So I'll leave it in the background there. But um, I'm going to explain to you how lasers actually work. So this is an interesting phenomenon. And it, it um, is based on uh, some quantum mechanical principles that are actually quite interesting. So uh, let's take a look. So there's uh, many types of lasers out there, but we'll be taking a look at primarily a gas laser, because that's really the simplest. This is the explanation that um, dominates uh, when people explain lasers, and that's because it's very easy to explain, it's succinct to the point, and most other lasers can be explained via uh, modifying this explanation. So here goes. You have a tube of gas, so argon, neon, helium. Uh, helium neon lasers are pretty common. There's, um, so we'll go with one of those. Say we got helium neon in this laser. And at either ends of this sealed tube full of helium and neon, or whatever gas you choose, really, carbon dioxide lasers, are two mirrors, OK? And let's pretend that one of these mirrors is a perfect mirror. So just to make the explanation easier, this mirror is perfect. It reflects 100% of light that hits it. That's not going to be true in the real world, but um, the laser will work anyway, it's based, uh, even, even that. And so what happens is you actually take this uh, helium or gas inside this uh, tube, uh, the laser tube, and you excite it. So what do I mean by excite it? Well, you take, so you know how uh, atoms have an electron structure, and the electrons are in layers. And by excite, I mean you take some electrons. So atoms are, are almost always, when you find them in nature or fill a tube full of gas, the electrons are going to be in the lowest possible energy state. So all the electrons are going to be as close to the nucleus as they can possibly get without sort of cramming and hitting each other. OK? And then what I mean by excite is you actually take some of those electrons and you move them up a level. So now uh, the electrons are, are, and the whole atom itself, so the electrons and the whole atom, are actually at a higher energy state than the lowest possible. So they can, in fact, lose energy. They have higher than the lowest possible energy. And in this way, they're called excited. OK? And so what happens is when these atoms, uh, the electrons, are in the excited state, if you excite them, I have videos on this. You can look up my spectroscopy video here. But if you excite them all with the same energy, so uh, you can excite them with another laser, a high-intensity light source, uh, electricity, um, so just to name a few. Uh, if you excite them all with the same energy, they're actually going to all excite to the same level. So in other words, you excite them, the electrons, say they're at level 6 or whatever, you know, uh, and you excite them all with the same energy, they're all going to jump up to level 8, right? Uh, just a total random example, but you get the point. They're all going to do the same thing with the same energy. This is the way quantum mechanics works, fundamentally. This is, this is the principles that chemistry is based on. This is why everything interacts the way it does. It's because of these principles here. And so what happens is this is not a really a happy place for the atoms to be. They don't like to be excited. They like to be grounded in the ground state. That's what the lowest energy state is called. And so one of these atoms, probably quite quickly, is going to emit a photon. A photon is a little packet of light. It's the quanta of light. Uh, quanta just means sort of the particle. And so it's going to emit a, a quanta of light. And this, the energy of this photon is going to be exactly proportional to the energy between the two electron states. So in our example, level 8 and level 6. So in the electron, jumps from level 8 down to level 6, it's going to emit a photon of the exact specific energy that's equivalent to the energy between those two electron levels. OK, so this way energy is conserved. Energy is always conserved, unless you're creating mass with it. But mass is energy, so energy is always conserved. So this photon then has an exact energy. And if you recall, all the electrons were at the same energy uh, level because we, all, we excited them with the same energy. So they're all going to be at level 8 except for one of them that's then produced this photon and gone down to level 6. This photon is going to start traveling through the gas towards one end of the tube. And um, what happens is these atoms actually, as much as they like to be in the ground state, they also like to be like each other. So when this photon, which also photons like to be like other photons, passes some atoms, those atoms are going to say, hey, you know what, we could emit a photon, we would like to emit a photon, 
Uh, and these photons would be really happy if they were together and they were the same. Because there's actually more ways for photons to be the same than they are different. Okay? And so, these photons, even though one of them doesn't exist, are going to say, yeah, that's a great idea. Let's be the same. And so this photon is created for the express purpose of being the same as the other photon. And so this atom can then emit a photon and drop down the electron so it's in the ground state. Now you have two photons, and those photons are going to go on stimulating other photons through the process I just described, uh, stimulating other photons that are all going to be exactly the same. They're all going to have exactly the same energy because they all came from the same level, and they all want to be like each other. Um, same quantum mechanical properties. And so then these, all these photons are going to be traveling through this gas. And they're going to hit a mirror. So remember I said I, we have a perfect mirror on one side. And on the other side, we have a mirror that's almost perfect. We'll say 2% not perfect, meaning that 98% of the light will bounce straight off and 2% of the light will go straight through. Now obviously this is not a real world scenario, but it illustrates my point quite nicely. In that, say, say these photons hit the mirror that's 100% reflective. The photons are going to hit the mirror and they're all going to bounce back off and they're going to start stimulating more photons. And remember, this isn't like scattering. This isn't a process that causes the photons to lose energy because they're not actually interacting. They're just spontaneously stimulating other photons to be like them. So when these photons are traveling through the gas, certainly they're losing a little bit of energy because they're actually traveling through a medium, and so their speed isn't the speed of light. So they lost energy in that respect. But that's going to happen whether it, as long as there is a gas there and there needs to be. And so they're, they're not really losing energy by creating more photons because this process doesn't require energy. It's just the way things like to happen. And so all these photons bounce off the mirror and they go back. They go back through the other way. And they start to stimulate more and more photons. And then most of the photons are going to hit the mirror on the other side. And then you can see they're just going to bounce back and forth and back and forth and back and forth and stimulate more and more photons to bounce back and forth and back and forth. But a small amount, in this case we said 2%, of these photons are going to actually go through this mirror and they're going to come out the other side. And then this is known as a laser.